Hello, this is Sue Ellis Seller from Spiritual Business Spotlight, and it's a little windy out today, and I'm talking to Victoria Crossman. Um, Victoria, hi, welcome, hi. welcome. Hi. hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and so grateful that you've asked me to be here. Oh, definitely, definitely. I loved your mission, and I loved your vision, and um, you know, I was looking into all of your work and everything. And so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Victoria Crossman. I'm a magic and mindset mentor. Um, what I do is I teach um, other people, particularly women identifying or non-binary people, um, how to heal themselves using magic in conjunction um, with whatever meth other methods they're doing. So I focus on a holistic practice um, using crystals, herbs, tarot, essential oils, um, to really help in that healing process. Okay. Oh, that's really good. So it's like a complimentary kind of support system for somebody who's going through working on their issues with yeah. some... Um, very good. Very good. And what, what got you started? Um, so... I personally have um, several uh, like mental health stuff my whole life. So I've, I've dealt with chronic depression my entire life and more recently um, chronic anxiety. And so um, after I graduated college, I started working in these corporate America jobs and I thought that that was the path that I was supposed to be taking and like working the corporate ladder. Um, but every year or so, um, and I would like land fantastic jobs, great paying corporate jobs, especially for someone my age. Um, but every year I would have some kind of like mental health breakdown and I would have to quit or I would be let go. Um, so six months ago, um, I was working another corporate job and I decided to quit without a backup plan and to just work for myself because I need, I needed to be able to have the flexibility to take care of myself. Um, but also heal myself through helping others heal. Right. Right. No. And that's interesting that you say that because I, I talk about the wounded warrior a lot or the, the wounded healer. I'm sorry. And, and how it really helps us to heal ourselves when we're helping others to heal issues and it also gives us a lot more empathy like I really connected with your vision and your mission because I've suffered from depression since I was a child I have anxiety um, I'm also into magic manifestation tarot crystals and I found great value and use that yeah um, and so and that's really good though too that you're you're saying okay maybe the corporate life isn't for me um, mm. and that I could be better value to the community and to myself. But yeah, definitely. And, yeah. and for me, it was like, I knew that I could do well there, but I, I like in the beginning, the first few years, I thought, oh no, it's just cause like I miss being so creative in college and I just don't like working. Like I just have to suck it up. And then like it became clearer and clearer like over the years that no, like my mental health literally can't handle these long hours and this stress. Right. right. And I think that being aware of that and acknowledging it um, is really important too, that self-awareness. Um, because I am so like I'm so grateful that I took action on that because I am so happy and I am so fulfilled. Ah, so it really turned your life around to yeah. yourself and and not feel beholden or or um, like you have to go and do a corporate job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. When I quit my job without a backup plan, um, it was because I was becoming more and more suicidal, and it I, it got to the point to where it was like. In order to take care of myself, I'm no longer available for this. Right. Right. And that's really brave to admit to yourself. And it's really uh, seeing it from the outside, looking into your situation, it was really brave mm -hmm. of you 
to admit that to yourself and to take the action and necessary steps that you did in order to create a life that you are flourishing in, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was scary for a long time. And, but that's also like the really wonderful thing is I've had all this time to also work on myself. And so like being able to get grounded and like, you know, there's situations that are still unknown, but that fear has, has been slowly peeled back. Okay. Well, that's good to know. And do you, do you still suffer from anxiety? Do you still like have bouts with depression, even though you're working in a different way and helping to heal yourself? Yeah, definitely. Um, I still take um, an antidepressant. I still see my therapist once a week. Um, you know, I still deal with lately, it hasn't been so much the depression, but I've been shifting on working on the anxiety bit because I've never really worked on it. It's always been focused on my depression because that was like the top priority. Right. Um, but so now I'm really dealing with anxiety and um, like going out into crowds and like having panic attacks and really like trying to learn how to breathe through those. And then, you know, I would, I would say that I teach as I learn sometimes, you know, I'm very open about that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And I really like that you say you teach as you learn and, you know, that's as an entrepreneur myself, you know, I can't say that I have, I still struggle with anxiety and depression and I still, you know, have to like reel it back sometimes. Like I'm, you know, seriously like yeah. focus, you know, because it's baby steps forward. It's like a tango. It's like two steps forward, one step back, cha, cha, cha. It's so true. It's so true. And it's, it's like riding the waves of life and, you know, like there's like, the biggest thing for me is remembering that this too shall pass. And that also kind of helps me keep it in check with like my highs aren't too high. Like I got to keep it in check and remember that like I'm feeling amazing right now and I might feel less amazing the next day and that's okay because that's just life and I'm going to have some really crappy days and that's okay too because that's just life and like whatever I'm feeling like it'll pass like we're just riding the waves of, of up and ups and downs you know right exactly because that's how I feel too you know, you know that. but yeah because that's it's really some ways I have to fully take advantage of those up moments to write or create or um, reach out to people um, because social anxiety is a big part of my thing and sometimes I just can't like get outside of yeah. you know and and so working on the internet is really good for me as well and probably for you too because um, <laughs> that level of like personal interaction it's still there but it's kind of a little bit dulled <laughs> I would say yeah, definitely. I, I think the thing that I love about the internet is that I can choose when I plug in and when I plug out. So right. like with those waves, I can be like, I am not touching the internet today. I'm going to like lay on my couch and read a book because I don't want to do anything. But then there's other days and like the waves are like, you know, every few days, like normal, uh, normal, I guess. But um, yeah, it's it's taking inspired action and intuitive action is is what's really changed it for me right right and that too i mean as we're moving into a different way of looking at things i think that a lot more people are realizing that they're just not cut out for corporate work and we don't have to do that anymore um and so many people that the rat race if you want to call it that or whatever it triggers us and in, yeah. into believing that we always have to be running, we always have to be creating, we always have to be working and going and doing things. And then, you know, normal, like you said, is, is secular. It has ups, it has downs, it has days where you're just going to be super creative. Mm -hmm. And it has days where you need to rest and take care of yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. And so you create things. Now, how... 
like how do you tie magic and manifestation into your self-care and healing practice so a lot of I'm sorry, I'm really distracted because my cat won't leave me alone. I know. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. Um, a, lo a lot of it, the, the magic and the manifestation um, is how I actively call things into my life. So ego is always like, you suck, you suck, you suck. And because you know that's what having depression and anxiety is like like there's a chemical imbalance in my brain and i can't turn it off i'm still gonna have that crap pop up um but using mindset like one of the things i teach is like rewire rewiring your negative thoughts so literally training yourself how to replace a phrase with another um to help you get into that higher vibration and not to say that low vibrations are bad. I'm, I'm really, right. yeah, you know what I mean? Like we got to live in our lower chakras too. Um, right. Thank you. I did a, a piece about that a while ago, but yeah, go on. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Like the, the stigma of like high vibe and it's like, well, when you have mental health stuff, like there is still a chemical imbalance. And sometimes we are required to still take pharmaceuticals on top of the holistic healing that we're doing. I mean, that's, that's how I am personally. And so, yeah, I could, I could talk about that forever. <laughs> well, I think it's a really important topic to discuss because especially in the spiritual community, there's like this um, shaming. Like if you can't mm -hmm. yoga or breathe or, mm -hmm. you know, meditate your way out of a bad mood or out of your lower vibrational energy force, then there's something, then you're not truly spiritual somehow. And it's really... It, it makes me so irritated. I'm like, Ooh. yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. No, definitely. I, I find it to be, I, I find a lot of it to be, um, it's ableist, it's classist, it's racist. Like there's, it's just, it's sexist. Um, there's so much that like we as a conscious collective are still unpacking. And right. there's so many that are still just like, trying to love and light their way through life and like it it doesn't work like we've got to learn how to dismantle this so that we can start building from a good foundation right right and that's one of like the the areas or the topics that i'm really flowing into right now is just like the third wave of mm -hmm. spirituality like the first was you know the church and coming out of the dark ages, so to speak, and, you know, getting into that thing. And then the second was like what we're writing off of right now, which is the spiritual bypassing. And, the, you know, it did serve a really big purpose to get people out of, you know, the kind of I need an intermediary between myself and God. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people took, you know, brought themselves into their spiritual equation. But then we got this whole like the judgment was still a huge part of that. Like the disconnection yeah. between the the whole was still a big part of that. And yeah. so, it, oh, I, sorry. It's it's a lack of respect for where people are at, and I think that that's that's so important because all that judgment is is expectations of others right. and you know expectations don't get you anywhere so it's it's really honoring where everyone is at on their journey and helping them navigate with love and kindness like you would want to be done with you but then sometimes people just really don't get it and you have to be a whistleblower and say look like this is spiritual bypassing we don't tolerate it you're gone right Right. Yeah. That's, it, it's kind of funny. I mean, it's kind of not funny. I don't want to say it's funny, <laughs> but like I've noticed some, some interesting outcome related to that. Like I feel like the old wave is kind of dying off and I hate to say, you know, they, they've gotten to an age where naturally they're, they're 
um, seceding their places right now. But then there's like, you know, there's another portion of the community or of, of the leadership that's really being called out for who they are right now. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and they're being analyzed and they're being, you know, we're, we're looking at them and we're saying, what you're doing is not working fully for mm -hmm. us. It's not, you know, I don't want to disrespect you, but I would like you to respect me, you know, and yeah, re yeah because the, like there are those people who probably got into their spiritual journey because of their own demons that they mm -hmm. were facing. And then once they got through those demons or they chose to deny them and say, oh, look at me, I'm wonderful now. And I don't need the help of anything, you know. So Right, right, that I'm perfect, I'm good forever. I mean, it's it's impossible. Like, it's the waves are part of life, living in your lower three are part of life. And I think that's why people like that aren't grounded and aware of what's going on in the world around them. Like, yes, we, we are working spiritually on a 5d level but we are still very very 3d and these issues are so 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 important and i think it's good that these big huge people are being called out and really analyzed because that we need to know i don't want to i i ethically can't follow a lot of people like because i don't agree with what they're doing i believe that science is compliant like and if you're not going to be saying anything about the like glaring racism in our world right now then I don't want you as a leader I don't want to learn from you I don't want it's not for me right right and you know we're at we're on the precipice of something really big right now I feel like yeah. you know exactly what you're saying like because you choose to ignore it, and I've seen a lot of people like recommend, like, oh, just ignore it. Oh, act like it's not there. Oh, act like it's not an issue. And it's just like, I can't That's how do you it. continue to be violent. That's how you continue to be violent. Right, right. And yeah. And, okay. Yeah, sorry. I'm all like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, spiritual gaslighting is a thing, too, you know? Yeah. Now explain that for people who are listening who might not understand what spiritual gaslighting is because I think it's a really prevalent thing in our community. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So spiritual gaslighting, so gaslighting in itself is basically when someone is trying to tell you that your reality is wrong and that like what happened didn't happen or what you're thinking um, isn't something that you should be thinking. Um, so, in other words, gaslighting is, you know, when someone tries to tell you that your reality is different from what it is, and then at that point, you're kind of like, am I crazy? Like, you know, they, so for example, gaslighting would be if I told my significant other, um, from a heart space that I was concerned about and it would be gaslighting if my partner were to flip it around on me and talk about like what was wrong with me. Right. Um, and so when you, in the spiritual community, especially with people of color, um, they'll say like, oh, like it's all in your head. Like I don't see color, like there's no big deal. Like, and so these people who have like like, and, like even in the LGBTQ community. So people tell me all the time that I don't have it that hard because I'm queer and because it's 2018 and it's not that bad. But then like in hot, like when I um, proposed to my wife, we went out to try and eat dinner and we live in a really conservative city and people were glaring at us because like we were holding hands. And so that kind of spiritual gaslighting is saying that my experience isn't valid 
and is wrong. Right, right. Because they, because it's not as bad as such and such, or, oh, you're so lucky to live in this day and age where it doesn't happen in California or in New York or right, in like, oh, like slavery is illegal, but like, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Completely. And so this is something, yeah, that's, it's, in the spiritual community, I've seen just like an explosion of this. Um, in the recent past, sorry, my dogs are barking. <laughs> so no um, that that it's really yeah, there is that gaslighting. There is like this sense of oh, get over it. We're in the 20th century now. Oh, you don't have it as bad as so and so and such and such did. Yeah, it's very much your feelings aren't valid. Your feelings aren't valid. Get over it. Love and light. Thank you. Yeah. And, and yeah. that shadow work and see, and that's, that's what I do. Like, that's my jam. Like I am all about the shadow work. Like if I'm not looking at my shadows, I can't live in the light. <laughs> like I, I have to be analyzing myself and I have to be looking at my behaviors with ego separated from, from an unbiased way. Like is this behavior serving me? Um, am I going to try and change it? And so a lot of what I teach is how to use tools like crystal and tarot and oracle and everything to, to better look at ourselves. Um, one of the things that I've been working on a lot is uh, teaching people how to use tarot and oracle for journaling. Um, and so that's been a lot of fun using these magical tools to, to help with that shadow work um, and and the blind spots. Like my tarot gets the blind spots all the time. Like I don't see it consciously until I look at a card or like a card falls out of my deck and I'm like, oh, all right, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's totally true. But looking at the darker spots in your personality and in your, your like your being, that's some hard stuff. Yeah, for sure. But and like some of it, integrating it though has been so healthy, and I've also been able to like talk about it without shame. So like some of my character defects are like I am lazy as hell. Okay, I am I am so lazy. I hate cleaning. I am a slob. I, I I'm really lazy. I would lay in my bed all day long if I could. Uh, <laughs> And so one of the things that I'm constantly like checking in on is, is this depression or am I lazy? Like, do I need to rest or am I being extra? <laughs> do, you know, do I really need to like take some time for myself or do I just really not want to do anything? I mean, okay. And that self-awareness and that checking in with yourself is like something that it, it's a learned behavior, and it's one of those ways that you start rewiring your thinking and your habit. Well, and I love that too, like to distinguish between are my actions being motivated by the disease that I have, or are my actions being motivated by my tendency, like my shadow tendency. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's why shadow work is so important. It's so important. Because then also, like, say, for example, um, I don't know, I got in an internet slap fight. I can go in my bedroom and I have the tools to, to rationalize and ask myself, like, okay, am I, am I being selfish here? You know, are, are my intentions good? <laughs> am I judging someone? Am I bandwagoning? Like, am I being true to myself? Um, and and being able to analyze myself the same way that I analyze the leaders that we were talking about earlier. Right, right. And so you hold yourself to the same standards that you're holding For others. Sure. Like, probably sure. more so because of your tendency towards anxiety <laughs> and depression. A little bit more. I'm, I am a procrastinating perfectionist. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will wait until the last minute and slot in like a whole. Um, have a big spiritual moment and meditate and get into the inner creative energy and I'll like rock it out at the last second 
and like it's all divinely guided like it still rocks but yeah that's that's how i function like i don't think my body understands like <laughs> yeah. i'm working on it though like um I know one of the things we talked about earlier was like the rat race and feeling like we have to work a certain amount of hours or like money, like you have to work hard to have money. Like, and a lot of that is all mindset stuff and that's all stuff that I teach. And for me, like I've only been working like a couple hours a day and it's been amazing. And, and that's, that's all I do. I work a couple hours a day. And then the rest I just like I lay on my couch <laughs> or I try to make myself go clean. Um, but like I have time for like yoga and meditation and like nourishing my soul and, and I think that's why like also being an entrepreneur has really changed things around for me too, because I'm I'm taking care of myself and I have the ability to and because of that, because of my mindset, because of law of attraction, I'm also able to financially sustain myself. Right. Oh, that's really nice. So, because I know for a lot of us, that's like the disconnect there. It's just like I can either take care of myself or be financially stable. <laughs> There's not like that. Yeah. yeah, and the way that I look at it, when I go through other people's courses, sometimes I call it my work. <laughs> Because I, that's what it is. As I improve my mindset, I improve like the law of attraction and the energetic field around me and what I'm calling into myself and I'm focusing on that. Um, and so when I carve out a couple hours a day to like go through a course or to read, I don't know, like a personal development book, then like that really truly is like it's, it's partially working because I have to take care of myself in order to take care of others. And I've gotten to a point to where I strongly believe that I deserve to be compensated for doing things like courses. Um, because I'm, as I'm learning, I'm teaching. As I'm learning, I'm teaching. Like furthering my education allows me to better serve my audience. Right. Right. And that's, you just hit a big bingo sign in my life. Because, because when you suffer from depression, anxiety, when you're working in the spiritual community, when you're like caught between 3D and 5D, a lot mm -hmm. of people don't acknowledge the need for money or financial reciprocation or energetic reciprocation. They're just like, you know, I'm a breathitarian. I'm going to somehow, you know, sustain everything from my gifts. And I think finding value. <laughs> Okay, you, you have an experience with this, I see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, having a business plan is super important, too. Like, I'm very, like, like, I spiritually take care of myself, and I am only, like, on Facebook a couple hours a day, and then, like, I, I take off from it, uh, because that's what I need to feed myself. Um, but, like, I can't wander, like, I have a business plan and it's loose enough that it allows me to take divine inspired action but I still have a general idea of where I'm focusing and what I'm doing and that's all the lower living in your lower three chakras that's all like being grounded and <laughs> like that masculine energy and like you know the the age that we're moving into up into that 5d the Aquarian age like it's all feminine it's what uh, like I've experienced this I get lost in that feminine i'll live in my upper three and then like reality will come crashing down in a depressive episode and i'm like oh my god i have no money <laughs> yeah. and i'm like um right i'm still a human having a 3d existence and so for me it's been shifting from just like understanding that i need that money to knowing that i deserve that money you know what i mean right. um and and that mindset has been what's what's shifted everything. It's it's shifted so much for me. Right. Well, and that's that's really good. And I've I've been like kind of toying with the principle of you know even the Holy Trinity was mind, body, and spirit. You know, and there was a body aspect to that. 
and the church is all about money and you know and we have to take care of ourselves we have to yeah. i only have 24 hours in a day the same as you you know mm -hmm. and i'm not going to take time but you know for me it's been relating how much time i'm working and how much time i want to spend with my kids my kids are you know like the okay so if if you're going to take an hour me away from my kids then i should be compensated for that yeah. you know absolutely. yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. and you know in order in order to take care of myself i and and that's kind of where like the business stuff comes in it's like you have to work backwards and like i've just been fortunate enough to work with people that have helped me like kind of pick that out but hi Hi. <laughs> That's one of my little ones. <laughs> yeah. Can you guys go in? I have like 20 minutes left. I go <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. Um, yeah, that was perfect timing from them though, huh? It's just yeah. real. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, and like you said, like really nourishing yourself so that you're a better healer and a better caregiver and in a better mindset yeah. than yeah than being resentful and frustrated right right exactly and like on the flip side of that like i like i don't struggle with it like <laughs> like i am definitely not perfect all the time at all but that's also where like being online for a couple hours a day helps like and i can conserve my energy otherwise but like we don't all just start like i didn't start out believing that i like deserve to be compensated for taking like someone else's course like drinking coffee at my house in my pajamas you know what i mean like <laughs> like like I definitely like we don't start there, especially anyone that deals like with mental health stuff and like, depression and anxiety. Like and sometimes I don't feel like I deserve it. And it's it's rewriting that script. It's catching myself in those thoughts and being like, Oh, it's interesting I don't think that I think that I I'm choosing not to believe it. Um, and it's it's this huge self awareness and learning how to stop ourselves in our tracks. And the only way that it happens consistently is by practice. Right, right. That's a good thing too. Yeah, and and sometimes you need help, you know, with identifying that, and that's where you come into play, or you know, where you would actually be somebody's kind of cheerleader, or you know, take their hand, their guide, and say, hey, I don't care how how much credit prejudice you face so far. Um, what little skeletons are in your closet? I got my own skeletons. Thank you very much. But let's take our shared experience and let's let me help you take yourself to a higher level than where yeah. you are. Yeah. And I totally thank you for who you are at this level because I understand it completely. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. No, but I'm saying that's what you do too. <laughs> it is. It is. Like I, you know, I I'm so grateful. And like that's, you know, that's one of the things that I do too is like I do a um, a gratitude list and a desires list every morning to try and like cuz you know, when I I am not a morning person, so I don't like getting out of bed at all. Um but trying to do that and training my mind to like reset into that gratitude and I'm just like I I'm so blessed that this is my life. Right. Yeah, that's how I feel too, definitely. Before we went into time, I want to talk to you because you are doing a really interesting, fabulous project. And I know we talked a little bit about it yesterday because both of us suffer childhood depression. And I know that um, that a lot of times they're they're kind of hesitant to diagnose children with depression. And um, do you want to talk about that project that you're working on, the, the, or is that something you'd rather not discuss the, today? Are you talking about the manifesting despite depression and anxiety? Uh, the picture. Oh, 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 oh yes. Um, okay, so I am 
project. Um, it's hashtag uh, life after self injury. Um, so my personal story, I uh, suffered from depression. I've I've had chronic depression my entire life. Um, I started self injuring when I was seven years old. And by the time I was nine, um, I was fairly suicidal. Um, I didn't get into therapy until I was 12. Um, and so I've been working on a life after um, self-injury project um, because this is my life after self-injury. Um, because we look at a lot of people from this perspective of, oh, like they're still in the middle of it. like they're really going through it or like whatever, um, whereas that's not the case. So like a lot of what I encounter is people looking at my scars and thinking that I actively self-injure when it's really been more than 10 years. Um, so I'm working on a photography project right now called Life After Self-Injury, um, and it's just snapshots of my family um, and me. Okay, okay. Oh, so it's not a broader, but you're, you're, you started a hashtag with this and so this would be like kind of inviting other people to share yeah their own life after self-harm or life after self injury yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely um, like any pictures like with scars like just like we're living our lives like this thing happens and we're through it and like it's a part of our body and we don't have to honor that um so it's hashtag life after self-injury okay and i'll be sharing that on both this and on the website too so that people if okay. they want to to that because i think it's really really very important like you said i mean people think that you're you're still you know self-injuring self-harming and this is this is like kind of like your battle wounds showing like really kind of chronicling the battle that you had within yourself with your depression a long yeah, time definitely ago. definitely yeah. and also just making people aware of like like depression is a chemical imbalance and it happens in children and it's important like for them to get help early um and and all of that so the the big thing for me is being able to say that I started really, really young, but I was also able to heal really, really young. And most of my scars are from when I was 16 and younger, and I'm 26. Um, okay. So it's, it's also that awareness that, right. you know, when, when we can find people that are dealing with it when they're young, they have a better chance. Right, right. And also to the parents to help them be aware that, you know, it's possible for their children to be suffering right now and that it's okay to get them help because there's stigma. I mean, gosh, if you talk about your kid being depressed and trying to get them therapy, it's almost like, oh, you're one of those moms, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, um, and it's really just, it's like medical care. It's just like my kid has a need. I'm going to mm -hmm. take care of that in the same way as if he broke his arm you know right. i would take the doctor it's really kind of i think that we're working in a really important time to remove some stigma mm -hmm, definitely because i mean it's the biggest thing for me is like don't please don't think it's just a phase <laughs> like if something right. feels off or seems wrong like it can do no harm seeking a medical professional and like as much as I believe in like Eastern spirituality, like I also believe in seeing a doctor. I take antidepressants. I see a therapist once a week. You know, my son sees a therapist once a week. My son is on pharmaceuticals and like all of that is, it's just important to talk about because it doesn't mean that I'm crazy or that he's crazy or that we don't live as functioning people. Right. Right. It's just saying I'm doing what I need to do to help my family in the best way possible for our specific needs. Sorry. Everything just got really <laughs> <laughs> well, like, 
okay, people, dog, <laughs> this job. Okay, so I'm gonna finish up in here because we got about five minutes left. Okay. Would you say, you know, you've covered some really, really important topics. I think number one, accepting yourself where you are, mm -hmm. and you know, no matter who you are, you know, no matter what you look like, who you love, um, what demons you face on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And really that you can work with magic, manifestation, crystals, healing, higher power to help you support yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It, all of it raises your consciousness. All of it raises your vibration. And again, not to say that low vibe is bad because it's not, but to help us heal, you know, it helps right. us raise our vibrations so that we can heal. Right. And there's nothing wrong with like, even if you are super spiritual on a popsicle stick or whatever, you know, you're going to have bad days. For sure. Yes. Like life is not always rainbows and unicorns. Like I, I wish it were, but it's not like, and we just have to honor the bad days. Like we do the good days. It's part of life. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think that's really important for people to remember. And so if somebody wanted to work with you, like what's your like kind of um, signature session you talked yeah. about? Okay. Sorry. So no, you're okay. Um, so, <laughs> no need to apologize. Um, my one, my big one is a magic mindset break, or excuse me, a magic breakthrough call. And so what that is, if it's just a one-off call, it's ninety nine dollars. It's where we set aside forty five minutes to talk about whatever is going on, um, like whatever issues you're facing and want to work through. Um, and then I am also launching a group program next month that I am super, super excited about. Um, oh, and cool. that is called Embrace Your Inner Witch. And what it is is one-on-one -on -one support, but in a group community setting. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, that's on my website. And my website is victoriacrossman.com. Um and then it's under Embrace Your Inner Witch. There's a little picture underneath. Um, so that's the group program and that is launching May 22nd. But right now I'm doing um, a promotion where up until the 30th of April, if you book now for the group program, you'll also get a free crystal healing session. And that's a healing session where I transmit energies from the crystal um, to allow your chakras and vibrations to realign. Oh, that sounds really cool. So that yeah. sounds nice. Yeah. Good. Well, I really, really have enjoyed talking to you. I'm so glad that, you know, we met and had this opportunity for an interview. Um, and again, yeah, likewise. Thank you. Thank you. And again, um, Victoria, V I C. T O R I A dot crossman C R O S S M A N dot com, correct? Yep, that's right. There's just no dot in the middle. It's just first name, last name dot com. Okay, sorry. And I will put that in the comments and list that. And thank you again for the time that you took to talk with me and sharing so openly. I really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was such an honor and such a blessing to be able to, to talk about some of this with you. I appreciate you so much for having me. Feelings mutual. Thanks again. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Definitely. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.